All right. So hi girls, thanks for joining me um, on this interview. Uh, what I'm gonna get us to do is, can you first, Tiana, we'll start with you. Can you introduce yourself? Um, go through your name, age, give us a little bit of bio about where you've got, to, how you've got to where you are today. Okay, uh, well, hey everyone, I'm Tiana and I'm 19 years old. Um, I've been playing soccer since I was about eight. Um, I started at Glenwood Redbacks and um, so this year was my first year at Wonders. Um, I was playing NPL for a few years, or 11 years, um, and um, like you just got to keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've, for years, like, I've always wanted to be a sports person, um, professional, always wanted to stop out. <laughs> always wanted no, to go. You're doing really well. You're doing really well. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's sport. I've, yeah, it's always been a major dream of mine. Um, ever since I was a kid, always wanted to go to the Olympics and stuff. Um, I started with athletics first. And then when I was nice. about 12, I was like, oh, what avenue do I go down? And I chose soccer because... It's so fun being with the team um, and with your friends. And so yeah, I kept going, I kept pushing myself and yeah, it's finally paying off. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of work to go. But, yeah. No, that's cool. Good job. And Alex, how about yourself? What's your football um, journey so far? Yeah, it's been a pretty long journey. Um, I've pretty much played football since I was like four years old. Um, and then grew up, just like grew up playing in Western Sydney. Um, when I was 12, I went to Westfield Sports, just a high school. Um, played with the boys till I was about 13 and then played at My Pony. And then from there, just kind of like kept playing like MPL, just like going to like nationals and stuff. And then I think the first time I played W League, um, it was a while ago. It was probably like 2011 when I was in high school. I played for Newcastle Jets for a couple of seasons um, and then played the, yeah, played the first season at Wanderers. And then I actually went to um, college for five years and then came back, played a season of W League. Um, had a season off and last season was my third time at the club. Yeah, so it's been a long journey, but um, it's been a fun one. Nice. What college did you go to? Um, was it in the States, I'm guessing? Yeah, so I went to um, the University of Colorado. Oh, cool. And just yeah. for those people that don't know, how was that? What was the process in that? And would you recommend um, players going to the college system? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think, yeah, so, like, growing up, I was in, like, under-17s, under-20s, um, national teams. And then it just kind of it came to a point where I had to, like, really have a look and just have a think, like, was I going to make the national team the next few years? And if I was being honest with myself, I probably wasn't. So I thought, why not go to America? I have an opportunity. Um, I 100% recommend it to anybody just because the setup is so different to anything that is um, around in Australia and it's such a fun time. You travel like all across America and meet all these new friends whilst also getting an education. Um, the process for me was I knew some friends over there. So we just can't, you just kind of have to like know people, have a connection and just kind of go from there. Obviously you have to have the talent, you have to work hard as well, but it's pretty much just like establishing a relationship with coaches and then just kind of making film, like having conversations, like Skype chats, just kind of going from there. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's awesome. It's cool to see kind of two yeah. different football journeys. Like Tiani obviously mm, started yeah. potentially a little bit later. Then Alex, you've been playing a little bit longer and you've kind of gone on two different mm. journeys, but then you've ended up, I guess, in the same place. Yeah. So awesome. Same place. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. So um, can you both just give us a rundown what you've been doing during this um, pandemic, mm. this crazy time in the world? How are you keeping fit? How are you keeping motivated and focused and... Um, have you set yourself any footballing goals during this time? Alex, you can start off with this one. Yeah, so for me, obviously, the, the hardest thing is is just trying to maintain fitness. We're just coming out of season. So um, I've just been going on like a lot of runs, even though personally I don't like running. I think it's <laughs> the most accessible thing to do. So just running, um, like taking the dogs, like going with friends, just kind of moving as much as I can. And then just like going down to the footy field and just like kicking the ball around, ball around just like staying like sharp. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been hard, but you just got to know that. Um, like I just personally, when the season comes back on, like I want to know that I've been doing the things I need to do. And then so when it comes time to play, I'm ready. Who are you both playing club for in 
I guess, the actual winter yeah. season. Um, I'm going to be playing for RPR. Oh, cool. And yeah. uh, I'm at Sydney Uni this year. Oh, nice. Cool, cool, cool. And you, Tiana, what have you been doing? Um, for, well, like, I've been with family a lot, hanging out with family and stuff, um, getting things done at home, keeping myself busy. But when I'm not doing stuff like that, obviously, a lot of the time, I'm focusing myself and um, my fitness, my skills. Um, I was doing like personal training and little like sessions with um, another trainer for soccer and fitness. Um, obviously now like restrictions are tied up, so I can't do that anymore. And that was so good because so much better having someone else push you um, and mm -hmm. doing that with you. But uh, yeah, just going for runs as well. Even my mom, like my mom goes for 10 kilometer runs. So she's <laughs> told me a lot to drag me out of the house because like who wants to go on a 10 kilometer run in the morning? Like, so yeah, it's disgusting. That, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't understand who enjoys running, but got to do it. So just running, um, taking the dogs for a walk helps a lot, just keep yourself moving. Um, mm. And then, yeah, taking the ball to the park. Um, it's hard by yourself, but you just, honestly, like, looking up at a lot of different people's videos online and stuff, getting, getting different ideas um, helps. Um, you can train anywhere, if, and, like, you don't even need a lot of equipment. You just need to be creative. Um, so, yeah, mm. just really important to keep up the touches um and keep moving keep sprinting but, yeah just got to keep active as much as i can yeah no definitely that's awesome um all right what who is your favorite coach and why so throughout both your football journeys can you name mm -hmm. someone a coach that really sticks out to you and potentially uh one of their skill sets that maybe has helped you to where you've got to today uh tiana <laughs> Do you want to start? <laughs> um, I'm still thinking. Um, favorite coach? I think my favorite coach would probably be um, when I was at North Shore Mariners. I had um, Andrew Taylor. I don't know if anyone knows him, but um, yeah, I know Andrew. Andrew was on my A license. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he's a um, nice guy. Um, and he's probably my favorite coach just because at that time in my life, I was 16. Um, I was just dropped from football in South, the football in South Wales Institute. I was there for like four years and then I started going downhill. Um, and then I honestly was nearly going to quit soccer just after having a really bad year. Um, not happy with people, coaches. My, I was like injured, went overseas and so my fitness went down and no one could get me back up. So I was going to quit and then he told me to come to North Shore because I had him in my, like my first year of being at Football New South Wales. So he told me to come to Mariners um, and um, two years of being there, I started like peaking um, and that's when I started making goals and really standing out to a lot of people um, when I played. So he was always really positive and in that two years he helped me achieve a lot um, just even just helping little minor skills, basic skills that had dropped off and ruined my game. Um, so he put a lot of confidence back in me and, yeah, really put me back on track. So that's probably why he's my favourite. It's awesome. Alex, what about yourself? Um, I would probably have to say Catherine Kennelly just because it's hard not to get, like, motivated when you're around her. Um, I actually played with her, like, back in the day. So I've known her for a while and she's honestly just, like, probably more one of the most passionate people um, I know that just generally cares for female football um, and the growth there in Australia, especially Western Sydney. Um, yeah, and it's just hard not to not to love football, not to be motivated when you're around her because she just generally like cares so much and wants to get the best out of you. And I think that like every single day she comes to training, like she wants to be there. She's stoked that she gets the opportunity to be there. And I think it's just being around people like that, it's hard not to like want to be there as well and want not like and be the best player you can be. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> um all right how do you feel about the player pathway in australia do you think the current player pathway is good um is there anything potentially you could change uh, mm -hmm. did you what was it sorry is that the pathway to w league uh just the player pathway so obviously football yeah. now you start from a younger age and then Mm. Going to like institutes and then national teams and then there's obviously yeah, the sure. league in between. So what do you think about the female player pathway? 
Um, is there anything that you would change? Yeah. Um, Alex, um, um, it's, yeah, definitely. I think it's, um, I'm 25, so it's obviously changed a lot since I was younger. But um, when I was growing up, there was like, this, like there was like a different kind of institute. It was just like the one team. So it was everybody that was in a national team, whether it was like 16s to the full team everyone in New South Wales would train together. So you'd have like young kids, like maybe in 15 or 16, and then you've got like Heather Gary or like Sarah Walsh, like all those girls. So we'd always be training in like a high environment. And then um, just during the week, our only game would be against the boys. So I think like having girls like Alana, Caitlin, Nicola Bolger, like all these good girls growing up, just training that quality every single day. I think that's a massive thing that just should get back. So like New South Wales and shoot a sport. Um, was the ones who ran that program and I think that was such a great way to just train at a high level and Sarge was a coach then so it was, it was just so much like the standard was so high um, and I think now that obviously like institutes there and SAP's good and all oh, that's great but I think there's a massive element missing between W League and NPL level so in the off season if you're not contracted for Matildas and you are like W League only get contracted for the short season during that off season you just have to train with your club and obviously there's such a disparity between the, the levels of the, the leagues. So I think that's probably one area that needs to, needs a little bit more development, a little bit more investment, is just what do W League teams do in the off-season or what do the players do in the off-season? Yeah. Sure, no, that's yeah. definitely true. You can see that I feel from watching as well that mm. I feel the W League standard has not dropped, but I think it's changed over the past couple oh, of years. 100%. Um, and... Which is interesting because I feel maybe it should potentially go. Be going I th- the yeah, way. I think like the individual quality isn't as great, but the overall quality, if that makes sense. So yeah, correct. Like the speed of the game, the athleticism, that's all gotten better. But I think yes. like the individual technical part is like you can tell there's like a disparity, or yeah, it's not as it's just different. Yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, that's probably the perfect part for me to jump in. Um, because I was gonna say like. Um, in like the teenage years or even younger, like there's no real club or um, academy that like just focuses on the, perfecting the basics of like the girls and like just perfecting the little things that makes your quality so much better. Um, there's no one really a good coach. Like no one's really making the quality of their personal skills and stuff better. Um, and a lot of teams is if you're good, you're good, and you'll get into football and stuff well and stuff. But if you're not going up, sometimes like coaches, like will just want you because you're good, and then if you're not really good anymore, they don't help you, and they don't teach you things and focus on little things like that. And then you just have to try and yourself get better um, and fix it. But yeah, I don't know. It's like girls, just it's just different, and it's not high quality. Um, mm. I think it's a key point that I think women's football is still developing technically a lot, yeah, I feel. I feel definitely. that you can have an athlete, but at the end of the day, you still need to be able to perform football actions at a high, like te- at a good, at a high level technically to be at that next level. And that's something that I mm. think, especially in the female game, that's why you've got the skill acquisition pro- program and those initiatives that are really important for females especially to really improve on those basics in football because if you can't do those basics constantly in a game under pressure yeah you're probably gonna you know you are gonna struggle so I think you two have now you know nailed it on the head that technically I think the game needs to improve definitely yeah. oh, and sure. especially for the younger girls that's probably an area which they can focus on hugely yeah it's probably just mm. keep running yeah yeah, so that's awesome. Um, all right, next question. What is your best football memory? I'll take it. <laughs> Do you want me to go hold that you, son? Um, probably just playing for Australia, like the junior levels. I think that was, that's always like playing for Australia is always fun and just like being able to travel like internationally and playing like, um, like a tournaments overseas. I think that's always a highlight but recently just probably this past W League season it was just so fun and we were so successful I think winning was always fun so I think this past season was was pretty cool um my favorite football memory um 
well, like, I think I'd gone to nationals and stuff before for soccer and they were awesome. Um, but just traveling as well with W League, like, just like state to state with a team, um, that's really awesome. And it's something new for me. Um, so that was a really like a cool and proud moment. Um, and it's just really motivating for the future. So this achievement would probably have to be my favorite and most coolest thing I've done <laughs> so far. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's good being part of a team and I think that's why girls especially mm -hmm. like being involved in that whole team environment and having laughs and having fun and traveling together and things like that. It's a, you know, I think it's one reason why I think female sport is so successful just with that friendships and groups mm -hmm. that are made in football. It's awesome. Yes. Um, all right. Who is your favorite football team and why? Um, it's actually tough. I think, like, I don't even know how to, if I can answer that. I don't really have a favourite football team. Um, honestly, like, growing up, I didn't watch a lot of soccer. Um, I was always just, especially in school, focusing, I focused on HSC and stuff, and I trained. <laughs> And focus on my sport. I didn't actually watch a lot of TV and stuff, and my parents didn't have like special programs or for me to watch like games at 3 a.m. in other parts of the world. So honestly, I'm not that involved or like, yeah, I don't watch mm. a lot of games. Is that by choice or is that um, because you don't want to? Because this is an interesting one, which I, I like to talk to people oh. about because I feel that maybe potentially as a coach, I feel that players growing up don't watch enough football. Really, yeah. like these days, a lot of girls I feel probably don't watch football. And I know that from growing up, I like watching football. So I potentially saw things and had visual memories of things mm -hmm. that I was getting taught by my coaches. Um, so I kind of already had an idea in my head kind of what was happening because I've visually seen it on the TV screen. But is that something that you would maybe if you could grow up again, would you change, like, would you change yeah. that? Would you want to yeah. watch more football? Or is that, some people might just not want to watch football and that's fine. People you know, I love you know, the game. Um, want yeah. time away and that's okay as well. But do you yeah. feel that watching more football maybe would have helped you in a way or? I think it definitely would have. I definitely would change it if I could. Um, and I can now, um, like, um, I'm watching it a lot more now, especially since I've gone into W League. Um, just like even watching it for a competitive like sort of way, um, just watching the others play and stuff. And yeah, like I wish I started earlier because I could have learned, I think, a lot more. Um, and it would have made me a bit more game smart, I think. Um, but I think it's just because of how my parents were. Um, yeah. My dad, big, he was like nearly made the Parramatta um, Eels. So he was big into footy. And so my mum watched footy a lot with him and like, it's just, they weren't that big on soccer. They liked the sport, but yeah, it's because of mm. my parents, I think, um, why I didn't grow up watching a lot of it. Um, and yeah, I just never got into it myself. Um, I think it's because I mostly didn't know how as well to get it on the TV. Um, but now I'm watching mm. more. Um, but I'll just mostly the girls because that's mm. my main interest and I want to watch competitively, make myself better, see who's doing what these days and stuff. So, yeah, I would change it. But, yeah, I don't think I have a favourite team at the moment. No, that's cool. Yeah. Alex? Yeah, um, I'm a little bit different. So I had an older brother and he was always watching soccer. So we'd always just, like, turn on SBS and watch it growing up. Like, doesn't matter what game it was. But probably growing up, Liverpool was my favourite team. Like, Stevie G was just so good. Like, every time good we touched choice. it, was just good out of class. <laughs> um, and then now, though, it's, it's kind of shifted more just because I do just kind of like, you know, like, I like watching female football more just because it is more applicable to my life. And it's just kind of nice to see where I am in regards to where people are. So, my personally, watching football, I like watching the American Women's National Team just because they are just so consistently dominant. And, like, everyone on their team, they're athletic, they're technical, and they've been the number one team for so long. And I think it's just interesting because there's so many people that play soccer in America mm -hmm. that the team is pretty much unchanged for, like, the last five, six, seven years. And I think that's just a detriment, like, to the players playing. So I think I honestly just enjoy watching them play because it doesn't matter who they're playing, they're always just class. 
Cool. So, yeah, that's probably who I enjoy watching now at the moment. They're absolutely nice. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. There's a reason why they've been number one for so long. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Um, what advice would you give our up and coming players? Um, I'll go, I'll take this one. Do you want to take this one? No, yeah, you go. go. <laughs> no, you go, lad, you go. <laughs> but the advice I would say is just honestly, um, watch a lot more of the oldest girls play. Um, so you know, like where the standard is and, um, honestly it helps you a lot, um, watching even the older teams, um, on the weekend, like NPL, even just watching them, um, because like, it will help you just get that little bit better and like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like it would just help you step up and keep stepping up. Um, mm. so, um, just try and learn as many new things as you can. And I think just never, ever give up because, a lot of times you go through little stages like, can I make this? Am I actually going to make this team? Am I going to make it? Um, so I think like the main advice is honestly just try and improve yourself and don't stop believing in yourself because mm. you put 110% belief in yourself and never give up until you get what you want. You're going to get there. So just do everything you can and yeah, don't stop. Good job. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, personally, I would just say just enjoy it. Like if you're not going to have fun, you're just going to hate it. You're not going to play anymore. So just find out what it is that you like about football, whether it's just like winning or whether it's just being around the girls and just kind of always just have a good time. And if um, and if you are watching games, just kind of see if you just say if you play centre back, you play centre mid. When you're watching a game, just see what the person in your position does. Because so many times people watch games and they hate it because it's like boring. But if you just if you know what you're looking for when you're watching it, I think that makes it a lot easier. And just honestly working on your weaknesses, just doing what everyone else doesn't want to do. That's <laughs> what's going to make you stand out as a player. Yeah, definitely. Good answers. Hey, um, we'll do a few funny questions or some weird questions. Um, <laughs> have any hidden talents? I've got literally nothing. <laughs> nothing. I've got no coordination, nothing. Can't sing, can't dance. <laughs> I think it's terrible yeah, parties. Yeah. Can't sing. Um, oh, it's, no, like, Tiana, you're a good dancer. You're a good yeah. dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. No, um, you're not bad. I wouldn't say it's a hidden talent, though. Like, um, oh, everyone think, knows you can dance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like, say, um, I think, like, the most weirdest little talent I can, like, think of to the top of my head is, like, um, is actually, like, <laughs> Go on. embarrassing. Like, I can, like, pinch, like, things and pick up things like pinch like people like with my feet <laughs> can you give us a demonstration <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> yeah no that's not going on the internet you should definitely keep that hidden don't tell people that one take that off the resume so just explain that again you can do what with your feet like with my toes like i can like pinch people and like pick up things well so if for some reason or not you lost your hands it wouldn't matter because you could now use your feet to pick up items yeah i think i could be one of those like people who can like somehow hold a pen and just like write a message like with yeah, their that's, feet that's cool. Like, cool you should practice that that's cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the next video you need to have a pen handy <laughs> and then you can practice your signature using your feet that's good <laughs> oh that's awesome do you have any superstitions on game day? I've like, always got to drink coconut water. You do coconut do water. Water. I love it. It's gross. It's Get hydrated. Hundred percent. Hydration is key. Beetroot juice apparently is another one that's pretty good for. Oh, I've tried, babe. It's so gross. It's disgusting. Uh, hydration, yeah. But it's yeah, it's no bueno. It's not good. No. Nah. Of drinking that. <laughs> um, I am like superstitious. Um, it's just, I think there isn't like a main thing that I have to do. I just, um, I always pray, but superstition wise, I don't like doing anything new on the game day, like in warm up and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I always tie my shoes, um, like tie my boots up, like again, right before the game starts. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's the only one that comes to mind. Um, yeah. like anyway, but yeah, if someone wants to do something new and warm up or give me something on game day, I just no, I don't like doing it. 
Yeah, so you're pretty serious yeah. routine. Yeah, I like yeah. to just do what I do and not change it. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. All right, next one. Uh, what do you think you'd be doing if you were not playing football? Are you both studying mm. or do you have another yeah, job? Yeah, I'm studying at the moment. Yep. Yeah. What are you studying? Um, yeah, I'm doing my master's in public health at the moment. Nice. Um, but yeah, my ultimate dream job is to be like a professional surfer and just be at the beach all day. <laughs> like, just be tan, like, living a life. <laughs> I, can I surf? No, I can't, but I'm pretty Fair sure I'd, I quit if I wanted to. But, yeah, that's, like, the dream. Cool. What about Joy. you, Anna? Um, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I got what would you be doing, doing if you were not playing football? That's right. Um, well, because I was so serious um, at a young age with athletics and soccer, I think I still would be – if not soccer, I would probably still be doing athletics because um, I was very serious about that and went to nationals and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I would still be going down that alley. Um, and I think, um, I feel like I'm working, I've got two part-time jobs now, but um, my main like career that I want to do one day is policing. So I've put that off um, and I want to just join whenever my sporting career is not going too well or done. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't work out yeah policing i'll jump into that um whenever i'm ready so yeah probably still awesome. cool that's awesome um what do you like to do outside football so what's a hobby something you do something you're interested in that kind of gets you away from football life yeah i like to read a lot and go to the beach cool same like yeah. i love, the beach. I love um, a good book Yes, yes, I read it. Um, Any I good books you could recommend to anyone watching this? The Shining. Depends what you like. You are? Yeah, depends what you like. I'm really into biographies. Yep. Have you read any good football yeah. biographies? Um, not, I don't really like reading athlete ones because I just, I think I like to read how people are successful outside the sporting field. Yeah, because I think that every athlete is so different. So I don't like reading. I do like reading them. Like I read um, Rafael Nadal's one. That wasn't too bad. But I just think that I like just kind of seeing what non-athlete people, what makes them successful. Because yeah. obviously being an athlete, it's always just like motivation, drive, like working hard. But people in a like professional environment, what makes them successful is more what I like. Yeah, nice. Mm. That's cool. Uh, have you ever been in trouble at training? And if so, what did you do? <laughs> I feel like I'm always in trouble. <laughs> Just talking, always talking. <laughs> never, pay, never paying attention. <laughs> They're just a standard. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Oh, that's. <laughs> and just like, yeah, when I was younger, I used to always have to run laps because I would always be talking or like mucking around. <laughs> always. Wow. Tiana, you got anything, or are you just on the talking bandwagon as well? Um, yeah, we like, I remember when I was younger, like, I just get, used to get in trouble in warm up. Um, like, why are you guys talking about TV shows? Why are you talking about books? Why are you talking about movies? Like, one soft field. Um, so that was, yeah, used to be a bad thing. Um, when I was younger, um, a bit more focused now. But I'm either, yeah, talking and laughing. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's anything else I get in trouble for, to be honest. Yeah, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, what type of music do you listen to? And do you like to sing in the shower or while driving? Do you sing along? Driving. I love. Yeah, music. who doesn't love the when they're driving? Yeah. <laughs> um, I love like R&B, um, a bit of rap um, and hip hop. They're my main. Um, main go-tos? Yeah. yeah. Do you have what song really that's your like pump up song Tiana what's something that gets you got like you have to listen to before a game um, it doesn't have to be like a certain song it just needs to have like the one certain like it just needs to put me in that right mood um so it just needs to be like really uplifting and like the one thing that's good about rap and stuff is it just they, they're pretty much saying like how they get anything they want and they're confident and stuff basically um a lot of the time so that helps me like you know 
in the zone. Like, I've got to be the best on the field. So it gets me, like, going for the game. So, yeah, I can't think of, like, a, the one song, but it's just got to have that vibe. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Alex? Um, I'm really into, like, Australian music. So, like, I always listen to Confidence by Ocean Alley. That's, like, always game day banger. Um, but I'm, like, the opposite. I can't listen to music like that because it just gets me too pumped and then I go out and I'm just, like, straight up trying to kill people. So <laughs> I need to just, like, z- like, straight up zen out in the change room. Like, I listen to literally, like, the most chill, like, alternate, like, alternate pop, just literally anything that isn't too hardcore. Like, sometimes I listen to, like, Ziggy Alberts just to, like, chill out. That's cool. Again, you two yeah. are very opposite. Very different, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, who's the funniest player you've played with? Yes. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, what are you talking about? Um, yeah, it could be you or... Are you being serious? <laughs> She's <laughs> loud, I'm pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be you, honestly. Just watching you sometimes, you do the funniest shit. Oh, can I say that? Yeah, sit down. Because I never listen. I never know what's going on. They always make me demo. You're funny, but just because you just have no idea what is going on. Like, ever. Like, you just say the, the dumbest stuff. Um, but generally funny, like, will make you laugh out loud. Like, Ella, every single time. Oh, my God, but yeah. She's the funniest girl. Yep. But, yeah, I've had a few, but, yeah, at the moment, Ella, she's killing the game. Yeah, um, Arun, it's Ella, um, I can't even say her last name, Mastro Antonio. Mastro Antonio, yeah. yeah. From our team. Nice. So, that was her first oh, year at Wanderers, hey, she, was it Victory? Was it Victory? Yeah. yeah. She, she's been like, yeah, Victory was, and then before that, just Perth. Cool. So she's been around she's forever. Yeah. Um, if you won the lottery, what is the first thing that you would do? Oh, holiday has to be a holiday, I think. Where would you go? What would be your holiday destination? If you could go anywhere because you won the lottery, where would you go? Um, I think I would probably go back to Italy because um, we have family there and I haven't seen all of it, um, but I'm pretty obsessed at the moment with, yeah, the homeland. Um, so I'd love to go back there and probably just do the rest of Europe. Um, but I just go to Holiday straight away because it's so hard with MPL and then now making mm. W League. Um, and I want to make that a goal for like the next few years of my life. Um, so it's like pretty much all year round, soccer, soccer, soccer. And there's no time mm. to go anywhere. And yeah, just holidays are never available really. So yeah, I definitely want a holiday first. What about you, Alex? Um, I'd probably buy like a double decker bus and just like do it up and then just travel around Australia. So I feel like no one really travels around Australia, but um, yeah, no, I'm the same channel. Like I try and go somewhere new every year, but it's so hard. So normally I just like take a couple of weeks off Premier League, like MPL in the middle of the season, and just like go somewhere. Yeah. 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 No, that's fair enough. It is probably hard with the seasons and how they cross over to balance that. Well, yeah, who even knows what's going to happen this year? Like, Life relate, if, like, yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Do you play <laughs> NPL? No, I don't play anymore. I used to play, um, but yeah. I decided to chuck it. Who did you play <laughs> for last? miss it. Yeah. What was that? Who did you play for last? Because uh, you played W League, huh? Yeah, so I played for Canberra. Um, I was number two goalkeeper to Lydia. I was a goalkeeper. Oh, yeah. Um, so we were just actually, Talk before you joined yeah. me in town, and we're talking about um, just that kind of how hard it is to be that player who is there training all the time, potentially mm. not getting much game time, and especially being a number two goalkeeper. I said, you know, I could. Especially under Lydia. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's not I could, um, you know, I kind of know what Tiana was kind of feeling because you're there all the time yeah. and especially as a number two, you'd never really get on the field unless a goalkeeper gets injured or things like that. But you've still got to be yeah, for sure. in a headspace and be in a position. That's the hardest head. thing is like being ready, like being positive, yeah. just like that is so mentally draining. Yeah, you've got to, I think, have a certain mentality 
to be able to well, do that because mm. I think it's so hard. You're doing exactly what it's everyone so else hard. is doing. And, yeah. Um, but no, so that was probably Canberra was the last, I'm pretty sure it was the last team I played for. I played a couple of games, but um, since then I what just... What season did you play? It was the season we won. That was... I was going to say, Canberra used to be so good, lad. Like, so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was 2011 and 12, maybe. I think it was that oh, season. That was like... Who was on your team? Um, that was with, like, Michelle, Coopy. Yeah. Um, we had Ash and Nick Sykes. We had Caitlin Munoz. Insane. Yeah. We she, had... She really one of the best midfielders. Like, yeah. so good. Yeah. So, we, wow. had, we had a gun team. Uh, yeah, I remember that team. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a pretty good year. That year, that year we didn't lose a game, I don't think. I, think. I was going to say, there was one season that you guys were undefeated. Yeah, it was that season. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that was probably the last time I played. And then I kind of moved into the coaching space. Um, I loved So you didn't play? You were just like, I'm just going to stop after W League. But I don't want to play at a lower level. Yeah, I kind of got... Like, I was in the national team for New Zealand. I'm from New Zealand originally. So yeah, I, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I played, I went to a Women's World Cup. I went to an Under-20 World Cup. That's so, so sick. So I've kind of, I've so kind of done a lot. Yeah. Um, Ticked a few boxes. Yeah. <laughs> As a number two the whole time. Uh, no, yeah, but that still counts, man. Yeah. Like, if, if not more. Yeah. So I played um, in my Under-20 World Cup. I was the number one goalkeeper. We played in Russia, um, which mm-hmm. was awesome. Was that 2006? Uh, yeah, we played Australia. Yeah, that, I was going to say, I was group, last time Australia made it under 20s. Yeah, we lost, um, I think we lost 3 1 to Australia actually. But, um, so I played at that World Cup. That's when mm. we played against Brazil, Russia, and Australia were in our group. Um, and then I was in the full national team as number two. We went to the Women's World Cup in Germany. We played Japan, England, and Mexico. It was cool. And then I actually went and played mm. in England. So I actually played for Liverpool for the girls' team. Over That's there. How was that? Yeah, it was awesome. So that was kind of when the league over there just kind of started. So it wasn't mm. as big as it is now. Um, yeah. So that was cool. But I got injured there. Um, and then I came over here. And then I just did my coaching badges here. And I haven't gone home since, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so... Um, but it's been good, and it's you know I think football. So do you years, coach? Yeah, I used to coach. Um, I don't really coach as much anymore. Um, so, so what's I've your got role a, now? I've got a full, I'm the football female football manager at Hills Football. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So Tiana works at the association, so that's how. Oh, okay, I yeah. Came okay, about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. I used to coach though. I coached the ACTAS teams in Canberra and. Um, mm-hmm. I was one of the assistant coaches for the W League team a couple of years ago. So I've done a little bit of coaching. Um, but it, yeah. Yeah. Now it's kind of hard to find that balance of coaching and work because there's not many full time mm. paying jobs and coaching, especially in the women's space. So yeah. I'm kind of doing, I guess, what's best. I can do a little bit of coaching, but, you know, I'm still mm. going to do administration and work and things like that. But it's good. Fair it's a good balance. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> this is without me. <laughs> um, so, what was your childhood dream growing up? Oh, to play for the Matildas. Like, yeah. Such a sick. Like, who does want to play for them? I feel like every girl that plays soccer wants to play for the Matildas. Who was your kind of player that you looked up to in the Matildas? Oh, Cheryl Salisbury. I loved her. Like, played centre back, was a mad dog, like, scored in the World Cup. It was just like such a good solid player and she's yeah. like the captain so like I want to be the captain but um yeah she was just such a good defender and that's pretty much like, like part of the reason I play center back cool yeah mm. um who do you <laughs> who's your favorite player too what from the Matildas yeah, yeah what um I used to like um Michelle Heyman just I feel like she's just mm. like a lovely person. Um, I don't know why. I just took a liking to her. Um, but her story is probably a bit like your story in some. Yeah, kind of like she didn't way. make teams growing up either. Yeah, so you two probably have a lot more in common than what you 
actually think, but yeah, her story is probably the same as yours. She started pretty late. Um, so you're kind of similar in that way, in your story. Cute. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah. You guys are both just so raw as well. Like, uh, yeah. raw players, you know? Is that a compliment? Yeah, definitely a compliment. Okay. Just like very instinctual. Well, um, the question was um, childhood dream, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> my best memory. <laughs> I guess I tracked. Um, but um, yeah, because of athletics and soccer, I think the dream was just get to the Olympics. That was something that always I found like so inspiring and just watching people get up on the podium and stuff for their country. Um, so yeah, any, either athletics or soccer, national um, level, well, no, international level, um, it was always like, yeah, and really big dream, really big goal for me. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, we'll go to this quiz. So how this will work is there is about five questions, six questions. You need to have a buzzer there, yeah. which is going to be your buzzer. It can be any, any item, yep. And then you've got to have a noise to go with that buzzer. So you can wave it at the screen and do some noise that will. All right. What's your noise going to be, Tiana? What's yours first? So make I asked you first. No, I asked you first, so we don't have the same one. So you go. So this is anything fine. Bro, could you be any more ethnic right now? Are you kidding? Look at index. Index. <laughs> Um, Love it. So I just go like, shh, shh. Can you, I don't know if you can hear it. Do I make noise? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Mine's probably just going to be like ding. 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 Okay. Ding. That's a bit yeah. outside the box, but no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What well, creativity up there. That's why I'm a soccer player. So I'm just not All right. No, nah, that's fine. All right. So the okay. first question is, who is the most paid female artist okay you've got oh, yeah I've, i'll give I'll you the three player. Okay. Okay. okay so that can be anything all right okay. I've, this has okay. got you've got three options okay so i'll give you the okay. three options a taylor swift b beyonce or c Katy perry ding beyonce oh, you're up beyonce no nah, you're wrong <laughs> Go on, she's the best. Okay. Um, wait, was Taylor Swift and what was the third option again? <laughs> Michael. Yeah, you, can't, you can't buzz in Bro, if you don't. No. Know. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Yeah, it was Taylor Swift. Well done. Yeah, Taylor, just well done. Good job. She's trash. Good job. <laughs> All right. As if you actually one. knew that, Tiana. Next one, you got three options again. Yeah. All right. What is the current Matilda's FIFA world ranking? Is it A, 5, B, 9, or C, 7? Ding. Go on, Tiana, you're up first. It is 7. Correct. Good job, Tiana. Who oh knew? It just doesn't sound very confident. I feel like that was more of a guess. Well, I was like, oh my God, they're so good though. Is it 5? But I'm like, oh, it's thing is 7. All right, here we go. Next one. Which W League? No, you got to pick this one. No, um, three choices. Which W League team has won the most championships? Ding. Go on, Melbourne Alex. City. Yeah, good Melbourne job. City. Hands oh, down. Was, that came to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two one. Okay, next question. What is the square root of a hundred? It doesn't have a square. Oh, a thousand. Ten times ten is a thousand. So what is the square root? Wait, 100? Oh, 100? I'm yeah. doing... I don't know what square root is. 10,000. <laughs> is it 10,000? Nah, wrong. A 10. Yeah. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> What's it when it's like the number and there's a two on top? What do you call that? I don't know. Square, I'm squaring it, babe. I'm squaring it. I'm doing the opposite. Okay. All right. Delete that question. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Let's stand on it. All right, next one. Who is the most capped international women's footballer? Is it A, Marta, B, Christine Sinclair, or C, Christine Lilly? Christine Lilly. 
You didn't do the buzzer. Oh, ding. Ding. Christine Lilly. <laughs> Alex, yep, you are correct. Well done. All right, two all. Christine this Tinkley has the last, most goals. This is the last question. Okay. Two all. Winner takes all. All right. What oh, is shit. the most deadliest animal in the world? Is it A, a box of... Oh. Is it A, <laughs> you know, you know, a a box yeah. jellyfish? B, very dangerous. Ito. Or C, a hippo. Well, well oh. I was. I repeat, being, hold on, I'll just repeat the question. <laughs> I know the answer, but you go. No, go, go. I'll give you a fair chance. Go. What is the most deadliest animal in the world? Is it A, a box jellyfish, B, a mosquito, or C, a hippo? I have a question. What constitutes deadly? Like, which has the most deaths, or which one will kill you the fastest? Oh, which has oh. the most deaths. Oh. Ding. Tiana, you've got to make a noise. You can't just spray them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Except that Spinoa called me. I'm going to give it to no, Alex because terrible. she'd already buzzed in. <laughs> Alex, what is it? Um, I was going to say A, but I'm going to change it to B because of just, there's so many. That is like, correct. Yeah. Mosquito is the right answer. Yeah. No. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. That's because they carry so many diseases. That's true. I don't think they the have money. a lot of diseases. Mm. Wow. On the money. All right, girls. Oh, thank I'm you. Just a face. <laughs> thank you so much for joining in and answering those questions. It's been awesome. No worries. Thanks yeah. for having us. That's all right. I'm sure all the up and coming young girls out there will get some motivation from this. So thank you. No worries. Bye.